the T-34 Calliope. This was the multiple rocket launcher system mounted atop M4 Shermans used in the last two years of World War II. The launcher allowed a Sherman tank to fire 60 4.5-inch rockets. They were fired electronically with cables that ran through the tank commander's hatch. The tubes were arranged in three racks, a rack of 36 tubes on the top, and two racks of 12, or later 14 tubes, side by side. The crews nicknamed the vehicle the Calliope, after the steam-powered musical instrument, which also had loud pipes. Though instead of producing whimsical music, the Sherman's Calliope launched high-explosive rockets. The racks were connected to the Sherman's main gun using a pivoting arm, which allowed the rocket launcher to be aimed using the main gun controls. The initial version of the launcher prevented use of the main gun. The Sherman Calliope was to be used to attack entrenched or fortified positions. The system fired M8 rockets, which could be found mounted to aircraft. They were fin-stabilized, high-explosive rockets with the same explosive yield as an M101 howitzer shell. The rockets, however, had about one-third the range of an M101 howitzer, with a maximum range of 4,200 yards, or about 4 kilometers. They were further only marginally useful against hardened or armored targets. Overall, the rockets were far less accurate than a howitzer, but when fired in mass for saturation, this was less important. In 1945, the system was upgraded to the similar-looking T-72 launcher, which fired spin-stabilized M-16 rockets. These were more accurate, producing tighter dispersion patterns, and they had an increased range, out to 5,250 yards, or about 5 kilometers. The rocket system was to be installed on Shermans for the D-Day invasion, and used against fortified positions. However, the system creates a high center of gravity for a tank, making their transportation on landing craft and maneuvering on beaches problematic. So this idea was scrapped. The system would not see use until early 1945, when the launchers were installed on tanks in General Patton's army, pushing through the Saarland in western Germany. Though the weapons system only saw limited use, it worked well to generate a high volume of fire support in a quick, well-protected package, suitable for a rapidly changing front line. The weapon was said to boost the morale of allies, viewing and listening to such a spectacle of firepower, while having the opposite effect on the enemy. A major downside of the weapon was that it gave a Sherman an extremely high profile, making it a good target for enemy gunners. The system could be jettisoned, should a Sherman tank crew wish to engage in more conventional tank warfare. Another variant of rocket-launching Sherman was the T-40, or later known as the M-17 Whizbang. This had a rocket-launching system that could fire 20 7.2-inch rockets. This saw even more limited use. Eight of the launchers were sent to Italy to be used as artillery fire support, but the system had very poor range. The British created their own version of the rocket Sherman, known as the Sherman Tulip which mounted two 3-inch 60-pound rockets on rails added to the turret. These were used by the first Coldstream Guards at the Rhine in 1945. This system was first developed by the Canadians, who had mounted such rockets to staghound armored cars. All major armies had rocket systems mounted and towed during the war. The Germans had their Nebelwerfer towed systems and mounted rockets on half-tracks. The Soviets, of course, produced the Katyusha rocket launcher, of which near 100,000 were produced. Though not a rocket system, the Australian Matilda equipped a hedgehog spigot mortar, firing 65-pound shells, intended to deal with Japanese bunkers. One of the biggest risks to all ground-firing rocket systems during the war was that they produced significant smoke making them vulnerable to retaliatory fire. The best systems were the most mobile and well-protected. 
Ultimately, for most tanks, such as the Sherman, their high explosive shells were typically more effective than complicated add ons. All right, I'm Johnny. Thank you for steaming all the way to the end of the video. Feel free to pipe up in the comments section if you want to offer some support. And we will see you on the next Steamboat.